Good afternoon. I'm so used to saying good morning. On the back of uh, the insert that you got today for Nett's funeral, if you look on the back of the first page, just follow with me. And this is from Nettie. If you hear that I have died, don't believe it. I will be alive more than ever, whole, completely healed, sighted, on my face, praising God and thanking the God that I adore. Amen? Amen. That's Nettie. This should be a celebration today. As much as we're going to mourn, as much as we're going to grieve and miss her. You know, when I see this piano over here and I don't see her sitting at the piano, I think we can all agree that we're missing a wonderful sister in the Lord who loved music and loved to share that music. So we're here today to give praise to the God, to the God that Nettie is praising today, the God that loved her with an everlasting love. Amen? Amen. Welcome, family. Welcome, friends and acquaintances of Nettie. Words from Charles Spurgeon and also words from Scripture. When the time comes for you to die... You need not be afraid, because death can never separate you from the love of God. Also words from Charles Spurgeon. A good character is the best tombstone. Those who loved you and were helped by you will remember. They'll remember you when forget-me-nots have withered. Carve your name on hearts, not on marble and granite. And I think Nettie did that. She carved her name on hearts. And Helen Keller said this, Death is no more than passing from one room to another. But there's a difference for me, you know, said Helen Keller, because in that other room, I shall be able to see. That other room is heaven. Well, good morning, family and friends, again. We're gathered here this morning to remember, honor, celebrate, and commit to the Lord, our God, our sister, Nettie, a very special lady whose legacy will live on in the lives of those she loved and shared her life with. God is truly the source of all our comfort and peace here today. Hear these words that the Lord Jesus had spoken for us. And be comforted. And I want you to, I want you to think of the word believe in these verses. Because the reason Nettie celebrates and celebrated even to the end was her belief in the Lord Jesus and the power of his resurrection. From John 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He or she who believes in me, though he or she die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Out of John 6, this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day, raise her up on the last day. John 5, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. And out of John 10, Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, you will be saved. Don't you love God's word? Out of John 14, very, very special verse to all of us here. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may be where I am. And out of John 3, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall never perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him would be saved. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one 
and only Son. And out of Psalm 48, for this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even to the end. In the last verse out of 2 Timothy, for I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near, said Jesus. I have fought the good fight. Now, this is Timothy, or Paul saying to Timothy, I have fought, fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That was Nettie's heart. Through it all, she kept the faith. At this time, I'm going to ask uh, Doug to come on up, and he's going to share a little bit here. Hello. I'm Doug. I'm Nettie's youngest brother. Danette E. Nettie Jones, April 2nd, 2019. Danette E. Nettie Jones, 60, of Clayton, passed away Tuesday, April 2nd, 2019, at St. Joseph's Hospital, Syracuse, New York. She was born in Herkimer, New York, on July 28, 1958, daughter of Reverend Donald Walker and Alma Rose Walker. She was a 1976 graduate of Jamestown High School and attended both Nyack and Houghton Colleges. She was in the Music for Healing and Transition program at Upstate Medical Center, until her latest illness. She was married to Malcolm Jones for 34 years. Nettie was a homeschool teacher for her children and had worked as a cook in Western New York. She also catered for her friends and enjoyed playing and singing therapy music for cancer patients. She was a member of River Community Church, played and sang with the praise team at the church in the Lighthouse Band, and volunteered for hospice of Jefferson County. She enjoyed taking pilot lessons and piloted her children's first plane ride. Nettie also enjoyed cooking, baking, antiques, interior decorating, running, swimming, gardening, dogs, and helping people. She is survived by her mother, Alma Walker, Indianapolis, New York, Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, two children, Lindsay Megan Livingston, husband Jeremy, and Jordan Kenyon Jones and companion Kristen Andrioli, five grandchildren, Desmond, Braylon, Michaela, Sawyer, and Tracy, four siblings, Donald Walker, wife Margaret, Austin, Texas, Deborah Barber, husband Cliff, Indianapolis, Indiana, Dion, Becky, Heald, husband Ronald, Smithville, Maine, and Douglas Walker, wife Tracy, Nyack, New York and an uncle, aunt, several nieces, nephews, and cousins. Her father predeceased her.
afternoon, everyone. I'm, uh, it's great to see all of you here. And I have the distinct privilege, I'm Don, the oldest brother, and I have the distinct privilege on behalf of the family to thank each and every one of you for the impact that you had on my sister's life. I can still hear her voice, her beautiful voice. Anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, took us a while to get here, but uh, this is such a lovely town and such a lovely church, so thank you for supporting my sister. Uh, especially uh, Nancy and Carol. Nancy was with Nettie on, in her last hours and minutes and Carol uh, that has helped us so much. So each and every one of you, a heartfelt thanks from the family. Oh, almost forgot. That's why I have my, my sister here with me. Uh, this is a special part of the program. Would you please stand and greet each other with uh, God loves you and so does Nettie, please. I love you. The scripture this afternoon is from John 14, 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going, Thomas said to the Lord. Lord, how, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the tr truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord. And I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Debbie Barber, Nettie's sister. I'm Becky, and I'm Nettie's sister. And the night before she passed away, she called and asked if we would do this song for her. So this is for you, Nett. And this is the mother, Alma. <laughs> <laughs> Heart of God. 
place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God, a place where we are Savior meet, near to the heart of God, oh Jesus bless
Good afternoon, everyone. Nettie asked if I would preach her memorial service, and as you know, you can't say no to Nettie, can you? So I can still hear her say, you go, Pastor, preach it. So I'm preaching it for you, sis. It's truly an honor to stand before you and share some reflections from God's Word. This afternoon, let's ask the Lord to be with us. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you on this day as we celebrate the life of our sweet Nettie, Lord, that uh, today um, she is truly uh, entered into glory. And so, Lord, we'd ask that you'd reflect some of that glory back to us today through your word as we enter into this time, Lord. Give us hope, give us peace, and Lord, I pray for every heart and every soul in this place today, that we could be changed somehow through the sharing of your word. In Jesus' name. I pray that this uh, will comfort you. I'm going to preach out of John 14, 1 through 6. And uh, perhaps the Lord would challenge us all to see our sisters passing through his eyes. So I'm going to ask you to do me a favor and uh, put on your glory goggles for a minute, if you would. Because that's where our sister now lives, amen? With her Jesus in glory, in heaven's glory. And what a glorious place it must be. You know, we get glimpses as we look through Scripture. God gives us glimpses, and then we get, we get glimpses as we touch base with Jesus along the way. Or change, the Bible says, from glory to glory, right? As we have those God incidences and those experiences in our lives where we touch the hand of God and we feel the hand of God on our lives. I love uh, Jesus' promise here in John 14. He gives us a snapshot of glory and a promise of what's to come if we've trusted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. The word troubled in the Greek means to lose peace. It means to, to become restless or anxious or fearful. And the Lord knows that for many of us in the world that we live in, it doesn't take much to, to be fearful and lose our peace. For many of us, the thought of death puts our heart in distress. No one wants to die. Albert King sang about that. He said, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Yet when we're faced with the notion of death, those of us who know Jesus Christ personally understand the peace of God and what it really brings to our lives, don't we? Nettie had so many reasons to be troubled in her heart. She had so many troubles, physical ailments, emotional ailments, lots of reasons to worry, lots of reasons to lose her peace. But the one stable factor in her life, and I'm sure you'll agree with me today, and we've mentioned this already, was her trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus said. You trust in God, now trust also in me. I think of the song that uh, our beloved Andre, Andre Crouch, Andre Crouch, I should say, wrote. Um, and I, I think about this in relation to, to Nettie's life. <clears throat> Maybe you remember this song. It's called Through It All. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. You know what? Sing it with me. Through it all. Through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Amen? You know, I prayed with Nat often during times of trouble. And by the end of our time together, it would always come around that she would be trusting in the Lord thanking him for his faithfulness in her life. And how many times that she rose up out of her sickbed when the prognosis looked bad 
I'm going to be honest, I, you know, I was convinced she was going to come in here this morning with us. She, you know, really, God has been so faithful in her life and through all of the troubles that, that, that she's had and, and all the reasons that she had to be troubled in her heart, this, this scripture certainly speaks to her life, that she was trusting in the Lord and the Lord was faithful. Amen? Give the Lord a shout of praise this morning, if you would. And how many times she had a testimony. You know, she'd go to the hospital. And uh, before it was over, it was a time for evangelism, right? She'd come out of the hospital alive and, and, and healed and, and with this wonderful testimony of all the doctors and nurses and medical staff that she was able to minister to. And that's the glory of the Lord. Amen, church? I, wanna, I just want to say to you today, maybe you're carrying a burden and trouble in your heart today. Nettie's passing maybe has left you restless or undone. I believe the Lord would have a word for you today. I believe he'd say, don't let your heart be troubled today. This is an opportunity to trust in me, to believe that I can work all things together for good for those who love me and are called according to my purpose, and I can heal and restore and make peace for you just as I did for Nettie, if you'll trust in me. Nettie has no more troubles, for Jesus prepared a place for her with him in heaven. He said, in my Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, I would not have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you. Jesus is saying, I prepared this beautiful home for you here in glory. And then he immediately says, listen, if it wasn't true, what I have told you, in other words, in our vernacular today, you might say something like this, think about it. You think I'm messing with you? Would I not tell you if it wasn't true? I prepared a place for you. I built you a home in glory. And guess who lives next door? <laughs> Me. I love the old King James and how it reads. It says, for in my Father's house are many mansions. Many mansions, you know. And, I, and that's what I'm believing for Nettie. Because you know what? That girl needs lots of room. Am I right? It, it, you know, they always say, you know, you can't take it with you, but it doesn't say that you can't accumulate some once you get there. <laughs> right? Amen? Because God's abundant, right? There's all kinds of riches in glory. Those of you who know me know that I'm a hillbilly at heart. I really am. And uh, I have to share the lyrics to a bluegrass gospel written by Bill Monroe. It reminds me so much of Nettie. It says, there's folks building homes as sweet as can be. They're leveling their yards and planting their trees. But my little hut, I'll just let it be. My Lord Jesus is building a mansion for me. Mansions for me, yes, a mansion for me. Built by my Lord beyond Calvary. My little hut, I'll just let it be. Lord Jesus is building a mansion for me. And then he says, each day I am getting more ready to go. He's cleansing my sins more whiter than snow. I'm packing my troubles. I'm bound with his love. Get ready to move to heaven above. Mansions for me. A mansion for me. Built by my Lord beyond Calvary. My little hut. I'll just let it be. Lord Jesus is building a mansion for me. Amen? Jesus said, and because I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am also. Wow, what a promise. On April 2nd, 2019, Jesus came to a hospital room in Syracuse, New York to take our sister Nettie home to her mansion in glory. And at that moment, she entered into her eternal rewards of peace and rest. And all of her pain and her suffering 
and her troubles were taken away. No more tears. Jesus wiped them all away. She is finally free and fully alive. Jesus says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. And I would guess, and it's just a guess, that most everyone in this room today knows the way to heaven. But can you actually say that you're on your way there when you die? That's my question for you today. You see, our sister Nettie could. And let me ask you, was it because she was totally sinless and without fault? Oh, heck no. Right? None of us are. Was it like all of us, Nettie had her struggles. She fell short. You see, Nettie's assurance that she would be in heaven with Jesus when she died didn't rest on her abilities or her merits. It rested in the sacrifice and the promise that Jesus made for her. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. He said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. And then he said, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Some of us are standing at that door today. And I want to encourage you, all you need to do is enter. She said, tell them the truth, Pastor. Reach it. So I'm telling you the truth. There is a way out of your troubles, in your struggles, in your trials, in your sorrow. And his name is Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, I believe today is the day of salvation and healing. And so we confess our sins to you today, Lord. And trust in the name of your son, Jesus. And ask that if you'd like to know Jesus and like to know the way to the Father, that you pray this simple prayer with me just to yourself. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I believe that the blood that you shed on that cross was for me. And that you're making me new right now as I call upon your name. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing my heart. Thank you for giving me the grace to forgive and the blessed hope, the hope that you have prepared a place for me in heaven right next to you. Father, into your arms we commit the spirit of our beloved Nettie. May she be welcomed home by the cheers of the saints as she finished the race. She's fought the fight, and she now wears the victor's crown of life. Her heavenly mansion is now her forever home in glory. Minister to her family now and the loved ones that have been left behind in the days ahead. May we see her passing through eyes of faith, for we give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
is Laura Duell, and I had the honor and privilege of worshiping alongside Nettie for several years here at River Church. Um, she's very near and dear to my heart, and she's very near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, she truly was part of our family, and uh, we have nothing but fond memories of her, and we're going to take that with us every step of the way, so I feel very blessed to have had her as a friend and to have spent so much time with her, um, both here and outside of church. Um, the song I'll be singing is God of All My Days. Um, this is truly her life song. Uh, this song meant a lot to her. Uh, she shared a lot about um, her, her thoughts and her faith with me and asked me to sing this um, come the time that she would go to be with Jesus. So um, I'm going to, um, it's a worship song, so it, it really is just all about worshiping the Lord, which is truly what, uh, like um, I think everybody has been saying today, it really is what her makeup was. She really just had a heart for Jesus. So I would just like to invite you to worship with me. And um, so feel free to worship along. came to you with my heart in pieces and found the God with healing in his hands. I turned to you, put everything behind me and found the God who makes all things new. I turned to you when drowning in my questions and found the God who holds all wisdom and I trusted you stepped out on the ocean you caught my hand among the waves cause you're the God of all my days each step I take you make a way and I will give you all my praise my seasons change but you stay the same cause you're the God of all my days I ran from you and wandered in the shadows and found the God who relentlessly pursues. I hid from you, haunted by my failure, and found the God whose grace still covers me. I fell on you when I was at my weakest and found the God, the lifter of my head. And I've worshipped you and felt you right beside me. You're the reason that I sing, cause you're the God of all my days. Each step I take, you make a way, and I will give you all my praise. My seasons change, you stay the same. You're the God of all my days. In my worry, God, you are my stillness. 
In my searching, God, you are my answers. And in my blindness, God, you are my vision. And in my bondage, God, you are my freedom. And in my weakness, God, you are my power. Oh, you're the reason that I sing, because you're the God of all my days. Each step I take, will you make a way, and I will give you all my praise. Will my seasons change? You stay the same. You're the God of all my days. In my blindness, God, you are my vision. In my bondage, God, you are my freedom all my days. We love you, Nettie. Hi. It's time to pray. Let's stand to our feet. Because we're at that place in this service where we say thanks to God. And it's time to remember that Nettie has perfect vision now. And that she can stand in eternity now. And she's got no more bumps and bruises. She's got no more aches and pains. For the Bible tells us there's an appointed time for everything. There's a time to give birth and there's a time to die. There's a time to love and there's a time to heal. And as I was sitting in the service reflecting, I believe the Lord spoke a word to me to share with you this morning. It was reconciliation greater mercy, and greater love. Father, we thank you that you sent your son to live for us, to die for us. Father, we thank you that you put this precious woman of great heart and great worship into our lives to touch so many, Father. And we pray that you will continue with the legacy of love and worship, that this would be a time of reflection and remembering God that it's also a time to say thank you. There was a song that the choir used to sing. May all who come behind us find us faithful. May the footprints that we lead, lead them to believe. There was another song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Father, we thank you that we can give thanks with a grateful heart. We ask that you would bless everyone here today, that we would walk forward in faith, we would let go of the things that we need to let go of, we would hold on to the things we need to hold on to, that this is a time for healing and hope and reconciliation and mercy. In Jesus' precious name we pray, in one accord, amen and amen. And by the way, P.S., Everyone's invited to go into the fellowship hall for a time of healing, and there will be a time for remembrances that will be held after the family's in there and seated. Where there, if anyone wants to share a joy or a memory, see Pastor Tom, and there'll be a corner in the fellowship hall. God bless. Go in grace.